lets us get better at something we both enjoy doing because we have all different sorts of because every wedding's different they ask for different things so it just builds our repertoire of skills and believe it or not we still learn new things from each other because he does things separate I do things separate and then when we come together we learn all kinds of things so best professional development ever working with each other but this time we thought what if we filmed the process so yesterday was it yesterday? Two days ago? I think it was two days ago. Liebeck yeah. went and picked up all the flowers and they've been sitting in a cooler and we're gonna put pieces together and show you how we do that along the way, give you some tutorials and tips that we've learned. As always, remember, it's not just one way to do floral, but this is how we're gonna tackle it today. So um, we're headed to the school now and then we'll be headed to the venue site and you'll get to see us put everything up and see how it all comes together in the end so we're pretty excited about this. Okay so we have some of these Stephanotis blooms which are also known as the wedding flowers and they're super fragrant and they're kind of small and delicate looking and the fragrance on them is like out of this world so we're going to be doing some of these but they're super delicate and fragile, so you never want to touch the step of the petals because if you touch them, the oils on your finger will cause them to turn yellow and then brown and then they're super ugly and you can't use them. So they don't, obviously, how are you going to put this in anything the way it is? So we have these fake little Stephanotis stems, which I think is just a piece of floral wire with floral tape and this little white thing. And we're gonna add them to little stems so that we can use them in our arrangements. And I see you're using a block of floral foam. To hold it in place while I work. Tricky, tricky. Right, so what you do is you just wanna delicately get rid of that. And you just go from the top and just, you don't wanna go too, too hard, too fast because then you're just gonna tear up the inside of this poor little flower. So you just kind of, and then once you get to this stage, you just kind of want to delicately bring it down into there. And now it's ready. And we're ready for the to wedding. Roll. <laughs> it smells amazing. What does it smell like? I think it smells a little bit like jasmine with a little bit of mint in there. Mm -hmm. Me jasmine I noticed and mint. the mint. Jasmine too. and mint. But they but smell so strong. super fragrant. So I think we're going to use these in some of the bridal bouquets and in the boutonnieres and maybe throw some of the extras in the table arrangements just to give the guests a little bit of an unexpected surprise maybe. Experiencing the wedding with all five senses. Yes. <laughs> So we just finished six of the boutonnieres that will be used in the wedding. That's what they'll look like. Beautiful. We have our focal flower, which is our um, crimson 
mum. And then we have Veronica flower heads as kind of our backdrop instead of a greenery this time. A lot of times you'll see fern or leaves as your backdrop, but we did something a little more unique, gives it a little more design. And then to add more of the special wedding touch, we put in two of these fragrant Stephanotis that Livex showed you how to add stems to wired and taped it all together. So the key in floral design is we always try to hide our mechanics because this is really pretty, but this bright green tape kind of distracting. So we are going to hide that with some ribbon. So we have this ribbon that's gonna tie in nicely with that focal flower color. And we're just gonna use a little bit of glue. Um, you could use a floral glue or a hot glue. Some flowers are really sensitive to hot glue, but with all this wire and tape, we're just gonna use a little bit of hot glue and I think it's gonna hold better. So I'm just gonna run the tiniest bit of hot glue down our tape, take our floral ribbon, make sure it's shiny side out so it's pretty, set that on, and then we're just going to wrap that around and trim off the excess. Make it nice and tight so that it's tidy and not sloppy and kind of all over the place. Just gonna do one more dab right there to make sure it finishes nicely. And then we're gonna let that dry, trim off the excess and move on to some bouquets. Okay, so for a little extra flair for this wedding, we're gonna be putting these pearl pins down into the Stephanota stem and give it kind of more of an elegant, sophisticated look. So you just wanna be super careful not to Jam it in there all the way. And my phone is ringing. <laughs> and then it hides the little foamy piece and makes it a little more wedding special. Oh, here you go. <laughs> I'll hold it like this. That's beautiful. Yes, yeah, so. We got the bridal bouquets done, and now we're gonna be working on the five bridesmaids bouquets. And you can't have the bridesmaid showing up the bride. So the bride has to be the center of attention. So what we always like to do is build the bride bridal bouquet and then half the amount of flowers for the bridesmaids bouquets is what we use. So we use like, I think we use seven of the red roses and five white and five peach colored ones. So really we're just having that. So this is all it will be. And we'll assemble. Well, like I said, we are gonna show you how we assemble handheld bouquets now that we've got our plan from the bridal ones. So things to keep in mind, we're working with two kind of color schemes. We have our darks and our lights and you wanna balance those out. You don't want all of the darks in one area and the lights in another area. We're going for kind of a more natural, messy, planned, messy, chaotic Rustic. look. Rustic, yeah. So we're not gonna be too structural and worry too much about the perfect shape or the perfect placement of flowers, but you do wanna keep a balance of your light and your dark colors. Um, we also wanna look at, we try to work with odd numbers. So it doesn't always happen that way, but if you keep um, threes and fives and sevens, it helps you keep that rounded shape, which is the overall loose shape we're looking for. And then you wanna look at what you have and say what's unique, what's different, and think it through before you piece it together because you're gonna put it together all in your hand. So when you look at what we have here, we have our large white mum, and we have these three burgundy roses and these berry stems and these um, smaller crimson mums, some veronicas, some roses, and some seeded eucalyptus. So when we look at this, I have lots of everything, but I only have a one large white mum. So that's gonna be my center point. So I'm gonna start with that and build everything down and around from my one kind of focal flower. Because this is my main flower that I'm starting with and it's one of our light colors, the next color I'm gonna move to is maybe some of our darker colors. Um, so I think I'm gonna balance that out between some berries and some roses and our chrysanthemums. But I'm not gonna use all of them because we're gonna balance again with the lights. So I'm actually gonna, to create some interest and kind of mess up our perfect shape, I'm gonna put some berries on the outside of our little, our large chrysanthemum. 
like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always tweak it later, but kind of balancing it out. Now your focal is usually your highest point, but again, these berries are for interest, so I'm gonna let them poke out a little bit. Then I'm gonna move on to some roses because if I were to use our chrysanthemum, that's two of the same types of petals. And again, we want unique, interesting, and contrasting pieces where a rose is smooth. So this is textured, this is smooth. I'm gonna go with some roses to create some interest. And we have three of those. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> Flower girl petals. Off with her head. Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna borrow one from that pile for now, we'll fix it. When I'm doing this to help me keep that round shape, notice that I'm crisscrossing these stems. I'm not trying to force them up and down and then bend them because that's how I'll break more petals than I already have. So we're gonna crisscross those in your hand and it does get tricky, but you just gotta grip it all together. Okay, so now looking at creating some interest, we have these smooth textured roses, we've got light, we've got this concentration of dark. I'm gonna actually move on to some of my lighter colored roses. So we have these white and these peach or light pink Aren't they called dusty antique? Something like eh, that. There's some know. kind of pink. I'm gonna put some of those in and then also mix in these chrysanthemums as we move out to give us different textures and different colors. And again, when I place them, I'm crisscrossing the stems and to keep that round shape, I'm kind of sidestepping down as we move in a spiral motion out. Um, I just use a white, so I'm gonna put this kind of pink in here. I'm going to crisscross it so it angles out. If all of your flowers are facing up and you have none that are like more of an angled out or horizontal angle, everything's going to shoot up and it's going to create this really kind of ugly gap between the handheld piece and the um, bouquet. And we don't want that gap. We want it to look like all one piece when we're done. So again, everything's crisscrossing and that's totally fine for now. I'm gonna add another light colored one, making sure I'm breaking up my colors and my textures. I'm gonna add in some mums below my berries. So you guys will see it's kind of coming together in a round shape and a balanced shape, but again, we don't want that perfect round shape. This bride's looking for more natural and rustic. So when we hold it all together and bring those stems together, we've got a nice round shape, but it's kind of perfect, right? And we don't want that. So we're gonna use some of this Veronica, which gives us kind of some interest and some movement and rhythm, which are some of our art principles and elements. We're just gonna kind of poke those in where things are a little bit boring, kind of like our berries added some flair we're gonna do that with our Veronica, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm spacing it out again so that the interest isn't all in one area. And now for mine and Liebeck's favorite part, seated eucalyptus is like the key in making bouncy, flowy, um, handheld bouquets. It has that kind of sage green color, which is super trendy right now in the bridal world. And also it's gonna give us more of that drooping flow and kind of mess up that perfect round shape, which we're trying to avoid. So I'm just stripping off some of the excess leaves. You don't want a ton of foliage down underneath your hand. Um, it makes the wrap kind of messy and it makes uh, the leaves will go kind of moldy at times. So we're gonna strip off any excess and keep it kind of clean and leaf free under our hands. So we're gonna add the seeded uke. Liebeck and I really like to kind of use it as like a drape around the bottom. We're gonna make sure the bottom has a nice coverage. And then poke a little bit through the middle. And then we'll show you how to wrap it. Okay, so now to just show you how to wrap it. Keep in mind, these stems are way too long, but before you chop them off, chop off slowly, because you can never add stem back. Keep in mind that people are gonna be walking with two hands, and everyone has different size hands. So I go two hands, and then about a third hand, because afterwards we can cut the excess off. And you're gonna trim your stems to all be 
as close to one length as possible, which will make it a little bit easier. Get those out of the way. Okay, so now we have our handheld bouquet. This ends are a little long, we can trim that later. One trick that makes it easy, if I let go right now, these flowers are gonna go everywhere and we don't wanna lose what we have. So I take a rubber band. Most flowers come packaged in rubber bands, so keep in mind when you're unpackaging that if you keep those, you don't have to buy a whole bunch. We reuse a lot of our rubber bands. Slide your rubber band over just a couple of stems. Don't band all of them, but band a few. Then take that rubber band and wrap it tightly around the stems and then bring that rubber band back down and hook it around a few other stems. Again, not all of them, but you make sure you're using different ones because then it will snap and hook, right? Now, if I let go, most of my stems will stay in place. So that means I'm free to let go and work with my ribbon, which is what we're gonna to use to wrap our handle. So my next step is to place this gently on the table, trying not to bruise or crush our petals. Keep in mind, there's all different types of wrapping techniques, um, different styles and different ways of putting it together. We're just showing you the one way we're doing it today, which works with our type of ribbon and our flowers. So here we have our ribbon laid out um, almost equal our flowers are at the halfway point we're going to bring up both tails make sure not to hook any of your petals or leaves and we're going to do not a knot but the first step of tying your shoes again trying to um, keep your tails fairly even you're going to put that up at the neck of the flowers and give it a good squeeze because this is going to help hold everything together Again, this may not be the only way, but with the type of ribbon we're working with that's not real stiff, this is a great way to do it. Pick one of your tails and begin wrapping in a spiral motion moving downwards, keeping it again as tight as you can and as even as you can. So if you look at the distance between the edge of the ribbon, I wanna maintain that distance all the way down. We don't want some really short and some really wide. We want to maintain that. It looks tidy and it looks prettier in the end. So we're going to do this, trying to keep that same distance. And we're going to go about the length of what two hands, because this is your handle. So we're going to do about two lengths. It does not have to be perfect. And you're going to want to leave yourself a little bit of tail. Now, I'm going to secure this using a pin, which we have all the way over here. We're messy. Okay. So we're going to take this. I'm going to stop right here and to hold it in place while I work with my other tail, I'm just going to pin it across. Be careful because it's going to poke out the back. Okay, so now you're going to take your other tail and you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to move in the other direction. So this tail comes off this way. We want this tail in the end to come off this way. But other than that, it's going to be the same thing. This is like a second layer, which is going to add um, some strength, make it a little bit more sturdy and hold your flowers a little bit tighter and a little bit closer. Again, try to keep it tight, try to keep it even and tidy. So we're gonna do that until we meet with that same pin. Which is going to be right now. Where'd my pin go? Did I cover it? Oh, no, it's right there. Okay. So now we've made it back to that pin. Here you have a couple of choices. I'm gonna remove that pin and the first thing I'm going to do is do that same, not a knot, but that same tie, first step of a shoelace and cinch it up, okay? Here you have a couple of choices. You could cut this completely off, put the pin back in, 
to secure that. And then trim off your tails and trim off the excess pin in the back. Or you can do some things with your ribbon, depending on what your bride wants. Like we mentioned earlier, it's so important to have clear communication with your bride. Um, you could tie it in a bow and have a little bow at the bottom. Or what we're doing today for our bride-to-be is we are just doing a second knot and letting the tails drape down, giving it again that kind of flowy natural look. This is really sloppy from where we cut it off. So we're gonna tidy it up. You could do a couple different patterns with the ends of your ribbon. We're going with a slant. Gonna make both tails match in length and end. And now we have our bouquet. Okay. So now we have our we have our big table arrangements done and Should we show them? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. These are the big arrangements that are for like the head table. Lovely. Back. Okay. And so with those ones they went with a mirrored vase. And so it hides all of your mechanics. And for the tables, they gave us these ones with um it's just glass, you can see it. And I always think it's kind of tacky when you have stems kind of weaved in everywhere and it just, to me, it just doesn't look very elegant. So what I like to use is this ribbon and it looks like kind of like banana leaf and it's really elegant looking. And I always just cut it like that and then you put it in and then you got your wet floral foam and you kind of, you have to sometimes and then you just drop it in. And what it does is it hides your floral foam and the floral foam is going to allow our flowers to stick in and remain in one position because when you're driving, if it's just a vase of flowers, they're going to be like going all over the place and it allows us to build an arrangement that has structure and it's going to stay the way we made it versus jostling around and then you have to tweak everything and it takes a lot of time to do that. So by doing this, we're going to save a lot of time and energy and heartbreak in the end. Okay, so now we're gonna put this um, tabletop arrangement together. So we did, we had fewer of the red roses left, so we decided to make red our focal point because naturally when you look at an arrangement, your eyes drawn to the boldest color. And whites and pinks tend to be kind of background color. So the red is really gonna draw the um, people at the table's eye. So we're just gonna pop that into the center like that. And then we are just going to kind of balance. You want to make sure that you're balancing your colors. So we kind of have the red with the two white. So a little, little I'm going to clip these just a hair. And then we're going to do the two pinks on either side. <clears throat> and then if you look at it from above, it's Balance. Nicely shaped and balanced, yes. And then we had some of this, and this is kind of an interesting, fun, playful little berries. So we're just gonna, um, gonna find the side that, you know, we're just gonna kind of tuck those off to the side. It gives it a nice little, what do we call those? Interest? Interest. Interests. It's interesting. And then we're gonna put the Dusty Miller in there. And Dusty Miller kind of has this really pretty silvery color and it's gonna just that's kind of long clip that back just a hair um but it adds just some fun playful colors to the arrangement and then once we get those in we're gonna add a little bit of fern the leather leaf bun you just want to make sure that when you're putting your greens and you're kind of balancing it because you don't want all your greens here and nothing here. You have to kind of, I almost like to spin the arrangement as I'm doing it just to make sure that I'm getting everything in there. So I'll put one right there. We always have this waste left over. So if you have the waste, I like to go 
that. And then you can kind of might put one more right there. Oh, it's kind of junky looking. I don't know what we'll do. Go like this. Put that one, because there's a lot of dusty mud over there anyway, so. Oh no. Until I crunched it down. <laughs> yes, you definitely have to be mindful. And then it's kind of like that. We'll add some of the seeded eucalyptus in there because it'll give it a little bit more of a, what do we call that, playful bounce to it. I can get it to stick in. That's a good one right there. And then we'll add a couple of the stephanotis in there because who doesn't love to smell fresh cut, fresh cut flowers at their table? So we'll just kind of find a spot where Ooh, we can. that spot looks nice. If I can find the floral foam down there. Big hand problems. And I'm looking around, you kind of give it a spin and it looks like it's kind of lacking something right there. So I am just gonna see if I can maybe plug in something like this because it's got some substance to it and it will help hide the bottom of that rose. Oh my God. Why won't you stay in? <laughs> The hardest part about doing these little arrangements is getting them to stay. Okay, I think I got it. Oh, but then this one came out, of course. Okay, and I think we're Okay, so we are on site at the wedding venue. It's a farm and it's beautiful. We set our flowers up on the tables over there and down the aisle way. And now we are working on probably our biggest job on site, which is this arbor. So here you see, we started with our backdrop, just like you would with corsages or boutonnieres. And we filled in this whole area with a leather leaf fern we're going to show you how we did that on this side. What is our secret ingredient? Floral wire. <laughs> you guys, it's so hot outside here. It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's, what's the back of our shirt say? Turn around. Roses are red, violets are blue. We deliver the flowers. Now go say I do. <laughs> so we got to get it done so they can say I do. <laughs> Correct. <clears throat> so see how Liebeck, even on an arbor, is still working to hide our mechanics using the posts and the greenery of the fern and the natural look of the wood, always hiding our mechanics. It's important. Yes. So we're going to finish wiring this green 
background and then we'll let you guys see how we progress when we start to add some color and other types of greens. Now what? So now that we have our greens kind of- Let's show them off. It's gorgeous. Loving it. Okay. So now that the greens are done, we're going to start adding in some flowers to give it a little bit of pop of color. Okay. So we'll update you in a minute. Okay. We're finished. We are. We don't mean to brag, but it's pretty good. It's super good. So we're going to show it to you and then we're going to pack up our stuff, make sure all of our scraps and tools are cleaned up and then we're going to get out of the way and um, let them enjoy their day. Yes. But we'll give you kind of a walkthrough tour on our way out as we leave. Oh my gosh, look, there's a butterfly on our flowers. I should have got a picture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Tour time. So here's our arbor that we said we'd show you. Probably our pride and joy. It's it's probably the best thing ever. Yeah. We outdid ourselves. We're once again. <laughs> and then here's the seating and the IOA, which has all those little arrangements that we actually put together on site. We thought that was better so we could see it as we did it. And then up ahead, we'll take you to see the seating area with our table center pieces and the head table with those large arrangements. And then you see the whole thing, you know where all of our work went to today. Precisely. <clears throat> you guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. That was great. wedding flowers turned out amazing and I hope the happy couple loves them. It was worth it. It was worth it. And we it. had fun. We had a blast. So. And we worked on our tan and we did flowers like some of our favorite things getting tan and doing flowers <laughs> on a farm. On a farm. On a farm. Did you guys recognize that farm? We've been there before it's with you in our episodes. It's been featured in several of our videos. We're a big fan of that family and they always help us out so. We love them dearly. It was fun. We learned a lot. Hopefully you learn a little bit and maybe want to tackle a family friend's wedding one day on your own. Let us know if you do. Send us pictures of arrangements you work on at home. Or even if you just wanted to tackle one of the arrangements that we did and show us. We'd love to see what you guys come up with. We'd love to see. If we can learn from each other, we can definitely learn from you too. But until then, until we next time, whatever. <laughs> Remember to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, we haven't like. asked that in a while. I know. So. Our, our numbers are a little low, so so maybe... Um, it's bad for the self-esteem. It is. It makes us a little sad sometimes. Um, but, but, you know, tell your friends to follow us. Like We, we love interacting with our fans. Not that it happens horribly often. Not that we have We fans. don't have... We don't... What are fans? Like, we don't have those. That's the third wedding we passed on our way home. Look at that arbor. That arbor's not as good as the one I we like did. I like ours better. I like ours better. Genuinely maybe ours the second to last one we passed. Maybe that that one gave us a run for our money, but that one best. doesn't hold a candle to ours. That one was no. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we better cut this. Yeah. Till next time. Bye. <laughs>